Okay, the first observation is that we're only five months from hurricane season and we're looking at hundreds of thousands of people homeless. I mean, the, the death toll is terrible, the injured is, that's another terrible figure. But let's not forget that we've had this catastrophe. We're going into tropical rainy and hurricane season in five months. That is not far away. So, uh, five questions. Is this a disaster or is it a catastrophe? And the answer is, it's a catastrophe. It's a nation-changing event. People in Haiti will never be the same. They will mark this as before the earthquake and after the earthquake. It will change their conceptualization of their own personal histories. Second, was this a surprise? Absolutely not. But the problem is we've been so focused the last 20 years on hurricanes, annually recurrent. Um, you can track them, you can see them coming. But that meant that we weren't paying much attention, well, hardly any attention, to the underlying earthquake threat, the seismic threat, in the Circum-Caribbean belt. And now this tragedy is brought home that we can't just focus on one hazard. We have to look at deforestation, environmental damage, hurricanes, tropical storms, and the sucker punch out there that could be coming uh, at any point, and that is a major earthquake. Is the international emergency assistance arriving quickly enough? From the point of view of the victims, never. Everyone always wants the emergency equipment and the food and the water and shelter to be there the next day. From an objective perspective, that just cannot happen. Um, it takes a while to mobilize, transport, and then the hard part, get distributed assistance. So when you look at official assistance, it's coming about as fast as it can come. We experimented, well, Office of U.S. Foreign Disaster Assistance experimented with pre-positioning supplies and equipment but it was always in the wrong place. We, we thought it would be in X and the disaster would be in Y. And so OFDA doesn't do that anymore. Now some hard questions. Should Port-au-Prince be reconstructed? The answer to that is yes, of course. But should it be the national capital? And that's an open question that the international community and the Haitian government and the Haitian people they have to discuss that. Do you really want to concentrate a third of the nation's population, political, social, and economic power in a very vulnerable alluvial soil in a very vulnerable area? Um, the solution might be to look elsewhere in the country for looking at all the different hazards and try to find a spot that is less hazard prone so that the vulnerabilities would not be acute, which they are obviously when you have a, a very large, relatively speaking, poor city in an area subject to multiple hazards. It has to be a better solution. And finally, what entity should have the final decision authority over reconstruction, the planning, the siting, the building codes, and most importantly, the enforcement? This is a, a question to be debated between the international community and the Haitian government because it involves Haitian sovereignty. At the same time, we, we, the international community and the Haitians, for that matter, can't tolerate the recreation of the same vulnerabilities that we just saw so starkly revealed. Uh, we can't have our great-great-grandchildren sitting here going, why didn't they do that differently? What were they thinking, or more precisely, not thinking? Now can you address what you think the long-term solutions must involve? The long-term solution at one level has to be the creation and deepening of 
representative democratic governance, real governance in Haiti, so that the government of Haiti can be a partner in disaster risk reduction as opposed to just a paper creation with no impact barely in Port-au-Prince and no impact in the rest of the country. On the more technical side, Haiti has to be reconstructed in a way, in a planned, controlled, very different way than it's ever been done before, in a way that minimizes the overall risk of these hazards by focusing on vulnerability reduction. There is no other solution. Otherwise, we're going to be here again, or our kids or grandkids are going to be here again with another catastrophe, and it's so unnecessary.